Hi beautiful! I just realized that this is the longest I've ever been without posting a video and I am so sorry. So let these turtle conchas be my formal apology and my way of letting you know that I'm back and I hope I can be more consistent with my posting schedule. I honestly thought that these turtles were the cutest little things in the world, but some of the people I showed them to made me realize that they might not have been the cutest, but I still love them so we're gonna make them. We're going to start by making the yeast mixture, so add warm milk to a bowl followed by yeast and a little bit of sugar, mix it and then set it aside until it becomes foamy. Then add it to a large bowl followed by 3 eggs. The full recipe along with all the measurements and the detailed instructions will be available in the description box below as with all of my other videos. After the wet ingredients have been added, add the sugar and just a little bit of salt and whisk together. And then once it looks like this, we're going to be adding in our flour and a little bit of cinnamon. The cinnamon is definitely optional, but it's one of those flavor enhancers that makes these conchas so much better, so I definitely would recommend it. Whisk everything together until you can no longer see the flour separated. And then after it looks like this, we're going to go ahead and add in another cup of flour. So this mixture is going to keep getting thicker and thicker with the more flour we add. So at some point you do want to transition into using your hands to knead it together. Or if you have a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment, then go ahead and use that. It makes everything so much easier. Because I don't have one of those, I'm just going in with my hands to knead the dough until it looks a little something like this. We're then going to add in some cubed softened butter. Make sure that it's softened or else it's going to take forever to incorporate. Once again, either use your fork or your hands to knead it until well incorporated like this, but a dough hook is 100% recommended. Once it looks like that, I added in some extra butter. You can add in all the butter at once or like in parts, I would recommend adding it in batches just so that it kind of um, combines a little bit easier because if you add all of it at once, it's kind of just gonna stick to the surface and be super sticky. And after all the butter has been added, we're gonna add the final half cup of flour. All the measurements will be available in the description box below, so check it out. But after we add in the flour, just knead everything together until the flour has all been combined. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna leave the dough to proof. It is absolutely crucial that you have clean hands when you make this recipe because we're going to be using our hands a lot as you've already seen and you don't want to contaminate any of the ingredients with unwashed hands. Once the dough is finished, add it to a clean buttered bowl and then cover it and less for about an hour or two until it's doubled in size. While we wait on the bread dough, let's work on the sugar topping. Add half a cup of unsalted room temperature butter or shortening to a bowl, followed by half a cup of granulated sugar. Use a fork or a whisk just to mix everything together and kind of cream it all. And once it looks like this, add one cup of all-purpose flour. You can add in the entire cup all at once or do it like half a cup at a time just so that it's easier to incorporate like I am because there's just so much flour. It's so much easier to kind of mix it in when you're doing it in batches. Then add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract or paste. This is also optional, but it's one of those flavor enhancers that are 100% recommended. And if you added the flour in batches, just add the rest of it and then just mix everything together until it combines together. Um, it might be kind of crumbly, but then you want to take your hands and kind of form it to look something like this. So it should be like cohesive and kind of like a dough. When your sugar topping is done, it should look something like this. Just cut it in halves and then we're going to be coloring one of them green and then we're going to flavor the other one with cocoa powder and it's going to be brown. So take the first half, put it in a bowl, followed by one tablespoon or three teaspoons of cocoa powder and just mix it all together. You know when it's done when the cocoa powder is well dispersed and there's no white patches in the sugar topping. For the second half, add green food coloring and drops until you reach the desired color. Um, you can go for a paler color or a darker color. If you want more of an earthy color also, you could add like just a tiny drop of brown food coloring to make it look darker and more earthy. Once you're done with that, set it aside and then get the dough that should be risen and doubled in size and then just divide it into 11 to 12 pieces. In order to shape them into little circles, cup your hands in a claw shape over the dough and then use your palms to roll the dough in a circular motion. That's going to make the dough look round. Um, you can watch the video for a visual demonstration of that. And then to make the body, you're going to want to have one head and four legs for each turtle. So use one of the balls of dough and break them off into enough pieces for each of your conchas to have one head and four legs. I used two tablespoons of milk and I just dipped my finger in it to stick 
each um, like a little ball of dough into the big one just so that it wouldn't fall off in the oven and um, you kind of just want to squish it together so it doesn't fall off and using either water or milk will help make it stay. Now for the sugar topping, break off small pieces of both the brown and the green. I would say break off about like five small pieces of each color and then just roll them all into little balls as shown on the screen and then I will shortly show you guys how to combine them and then kind of flatten them down to make like the little gradient pattern that were on each of the contrasts. So you have a couple tiny balls of each color, just place them together, like press them together in a random configuration, um, making sure that the colors are kind of alternating so it's not like all the greens and all the browns are together, just make sure it's kind of in a random pattern and then just squish it together into one ball with your hands, but don't roll it too much because we don't want the colors to blend, we just kind of want them to stick together. And once you're done with that, press it together between your hands or use a tortilla press just so that it's flattened and then place it on top of your turtle. You can also use milk um, to make it stick on top, but that's not necessary. It kind of just sticks by itself. Once you're done with that, repeat for the rest of the conchas and then we're ready for carving. This is my favorite part about the conchas. So take a serrated knife and then just carve any shape of your choice. Um, because these are turtles, I thought it made the most fitting to make like diagonal cuts, but if you want, you could also go with the traditional conch cut. Um, you can refer to any other video for that. And once you're done with that, we're going to bake it in our preheated 350 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes, just until the bread has kind of become golden brown and the sugar topping has set. And then allow to cool it 100% before you make the faces, or else it's going to bleed through. But to make the faces, I just use a toothpick and black food coloring, and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you soon. Bye!